Babari Shesha, a loca provesha. Nidra Tadio Tadiba. Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari. Rama Krishna Hayagriva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayagriva Nasimha Vamana Sri Madhusudhana Rajendra Nandana Shama Nasimha Vamana Sri Madhusudhana Prajendra Nanda Nashama Putana Katana Kaitaba Shatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhūtana gātana kāyta bhāśātana jāya jāsarati rāma Yashoda dhulala govinda gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dulala Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhara Ravana Thakura Mahana Task Gopi Jana Vashrahari
Rajerada kala gopa brinda palo chita hari vam sita hari Rajerada kala gopa brinda palo Chita Hari Vam Sita Hari Yogindra Bandana Shinanda Nandana Prajajana Bhaya Hari Yogindra Bandana Shrinanda Nandana Prajajana Bhaya Hari Nabi Nani Radha Rupa Manohara Mohana Vam Sivi Hari Nabina Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Vam Sivi Hari Yashodana Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikunjara Sabilasi Yashodana Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikunjara Sabilasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipinani Bahasi Adamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivahasi Ananda Vardana Prema Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama Ananda Vardana Prema Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama Gopanga Nagana Chitta Vinodhana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma (laughs) 
Gopangana Gana Chita Binodana Samasta Guna Gana Tama Yamuna Jivana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jivana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Ras Go Krishna Yash Rako Vachana Manamora Nama Shuddha Das Go Krishna Yash Rako Vachana Manamora Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Ota Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Nittai Gaur Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nittai Gaur Hari Bo Nittai Gaur Premanande Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharhine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschachade Satarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Chayam Mudhir Hayat Nesta Praeshu Vapadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto number 6, Chapter 1, History of the Life of Ajamila, Text number 12. Nasnatapatyam evannam 
nasnata patyam evanam nasnata patyam evanam vyad vyadayo bibavanti hi vyadayo bibavanti hi evam niyamakrit rajan evam niyamakrit rajan shane shemaya kaupate shanai shemaya kaupate Nashnata patyam evannam Vyadayo bibavanti hi Evam niyama kridrajan Sanayte maya kaupate Nasnata padyam evannam Vyadayo bibavanti hi Evam niyama kridrajan Sanay se maya kaupate We got some light here. <laughs> the light is just not enough for me to read the. Na. Not. Not. Asnata. Asnata. Those who hit. Those who hit. Patyam. Patyam. Suitable. Suitable. Eva. Eva. Indeed. Indeed. Annam. Annam. Foot. Foot. Vyadaya. Different type of disease. Different types of disease. Abhivanna. Abhivan. Abhivavanti. Overcome. He. Indeed. Evam. Similarly. Niyamakrit. One following regulative principle. Rajan. O King. Sanai. Gradually. Semaya. For well being. Kalpate. Becomes fit. Translation purpose by Srila Prabhupada Ki. Translation. 
my dear king if a diseased person eats the pure uncontaminated food prescribed by a physician he is gradually cured and the infection of the disease can no longer touch him similarly if one follows the regulative principle of knowledge he gradually progresses toward liberation from material contamination purport one who is gradually purified if one cultivate knowledge even though even through mental speculation and strictly follows the regulative principle and join in the sastras and explain in the text next verse therefore the platform of jnana speculative knowledge is better than the platform of karma fruitive action there's every chance of following falling from the platform of karma to hellish condition but on the platform of jnana one is safe from hellish life although one is still not completely free from infection the difference is that on the platform of jnana one thinks that he has been liberated and on and has become narayana or bhagavan this is another phase of ignorance ye anye ravi ravindaksha vimukta mani maninas tvayasta bhavat avishuddha buddhaya aruya krichena param padam tata patantiyado nad nadirth yusmat angraya bhagavatam 10232 because of ignorance one speculatively thinks himself liberated from material contamination although actually he is not therefore even if one rises to the brahmanyana understanding of brahman one nevertheless fall down because of not taking shelter of the lotus feet of krishna nonetheless jnanis at least know what is sinful and what is pious and they very cautious cautiously eat uh, act according to the injunction of the shastras mandasya kyananjana shalakaya chatsurunmilitanyena tasmay shri gurave namaha vanchakaupatarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam pavan ebyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sukadeva Goswami is continuing to reply to Parikshit Maharaj. Remember Parikshit Maharaj was concerned to deliver people from hell. So initially Sukadeva Goswami suggested, well, they can be saved from hell by doing atonement. But Parikshit Maharaj was not satisfied with that reply. And Sukadeva Goswami I said yes you're right it's really not enough the process of atonement is not sufficient to save people from hell they will continue to do their sinful activities even though they may do atonements so now sukadeva goswami is giving another answer and this time he's suggesting that okay instead of doing atonement they should come to the platform of knowledge the platform of knowledge 
it's mentioned here is evam niyam akridrajan niyam just like in the astanga yoga there are eight limbs of astanga yoga it begins with yam and niyam yam and niyam the things you you should give up and the things you should do so niyam the things which we we should do we should do things like practice some austerity and we should practice celibacy and we should control the mind and senses and in this way come to the higher platform come to become eventually go on and become qualified for liberation of course we we say in Krishna consciousness is say no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no nonsense, Prabhupada says. So that is niyam. We, we give up the nonsense and we take up the good thing. Good things are chanting mantras and reading scriptures and worshipping the deity coming to see the deity and offering respects to the deity and then also worshipping the acharyas like we worship we just did Prabhupada Guru Puja so worshipping the acharyas is also part of the process of knowledge in this way by by, cultiv by following these kind of principles which are described in the scriptures one can purify <coughs> one can purify one's consciousness however there are problems with the path of knowledge it's not that knowledge is the ultimate answer to the problem. The problem with the path of knowledge is that we may think that we have become God. We may think that we have become the Supreme. As quoted, the verse was read in the purport from the 10th canto of prayer by Lord Brahma, Yanye, uh, Yanye, um, Yanye Ravindakshyava Muktamaninas Toyasta Bhavad Avishuddha Buddhaya Avishuddha Buddhaya Avishuddha Buddhaya means our intelligence is not purified. The intelligence is not properly purified. And because the intelligence is not properly purified, when we think we have come to the liberated platform, we think we have become God. We think we have become one with the Supreme. And that is what happens in the impersonal school, the followers of Sripad Shankaracharya, that the Mayavadi sannyasis are all considered to be God. And if you meet, when you meet the Mayavadi sannyasis, you respect them by saying, Namo Narayan. You meet the Mayavadi Sanyasi, you're supposed to address them like that. Namo Narayan. I offer my obeisances to you who are one with Lord Narayan. Hmm. So this is Avishuddha Buddhaya. This is not correct. This is the improper understanding. There is a liberated platform but liberation, you have to understand there are five different kinds of liberation. And of these five kinds, one of them is never accepted by devotees. And that one which is never accepted is called, uh, that is uh, impersonal liberation where you become one with the Supreme. Uh, so that kind of liberation is never accepted by devotees. Why not? Because in that position 
you simply merge into the into the Brahma into the Brahman and on that platform of Brahman there's no activity there's nothing to do there's no variety there's no relationships there's only the the oneness so they don't they don't you, just like we often sometimes they say see no evil hear no evil speak no evil so the impersonalists take it don't see anything don't hear anything and don't speak anything they negate everything they negate all the activities of the senses instead of understanding how to use the senses in the purified manner they negate everything they want to shut away themselves for, to stop everything and so we see uh, how the impersonalists they often like to go away from the world they go to the mountain they'll go into the uh, or into the cave or in the forest they want to go away from the world they don't want to be with people they just want to be on their own and they just want to go into isolation seclusion so this is the impersonalist idea they don't they think ultimately everything is just simply one and in that oneness there's no variety so for the impersonalists they don't they don't see they, they're not able to distinguish between the soul and the super soul so they follow what is called advaita vada meaning just one soul only one soul no there's not atman paramatma for the impersonalists there's only atman and there's but all, everybody is Atman and Krishna they, they say when Lord Krishna comes into this world he is also Atman he is he is not they say he's a but and his body is material they will say like that they will say that Krishna comes to this world with a material body so they consider that oh Krishna died or oh, Krishna killed was killed and like they cannot understand how the Lord has a transcendental body as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita abhajananti mamudha manushim tanamashritam param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram the foolish mock at me descending amongst them like a human being they do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be so we, the impersonalists are gu guilty of this they think Krishna is a, an ordinary mortal person with a material body they don't understand there's a that you can have a, a transcendental body and certainly when the Supreme Lord comes to this world he comes in his transcendental form he doesn't come with the material form and that's why he was able to perform wonderful pastimes the different demons who came to attack him they were all killed by Krishna and Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and Lord Balaram he was with his plow he was breaking the Yamuna into little streams and he was dragging Hastinapur into the Yamuna so so many wonderful things were done by these two cowherd boys Sri Krishna and Balarama they were performing activities which are inconceivable but you have to understand that if you have a spiritual body then nothing is inconceivable because they have spiritual bodies they can perform anything there's nothing impossible 
for them because their bodies are transcendental, their bodies are not material. So ordinary people, they're not able to understand this fact. They have difficulty to appreciate that there can be such things as inconceivable energy. But we see inconceivable energy every day. You just go outside now and you'll see the sun there. The sun is an example of inconceivable energy. Every day, every moment emanating so much heat and light from the sun. It's inconceivable that there could be such a source of heat and light. We have to understand there are many inconceivable phenomena in the world. And when we look at the bodies of the living entities, we can see within the different bodies of the different living entities how there's so much design present within the forms of the living entities. Perfect design is made, just like Within the human bodies, there is a facility to reproduce, that they can reproduce themselves without the help of anybody else. Man and woman can unite together and produce children. This is arranged by the Supreme Lord. And then we have so many other senses. We have eyes which can see, and can see the form and, and understand the shape. And we have ears which can perceive the sound. And we have nose which can smell the aroma. And hands which can touch and feel the form. Like the, all of these different senses, they're actually meant for the service of the Supreme Lord. But we're abusing them. We're using the senses simply for our own sense pleasure. We're not using the senses for what they're actually intended for. The senses are actually meant for the service of the Supreme Lord. They are given to us by the Lord and we're meant to use them for his pleasure. But these mayavadis, these jnanis, they're thinking, no, everything is false. And they take a statement which says, the world is false and only the Brahman is true. They say, Brahman satyam jagat mitya. Only the Brahman, only spirit is truth and everything else is illusion, false. All right? So Prabhupada said, if it's all illusion, then I'm going to take this brick and hit you on the head with it. It's all illusion, right? That is their philosophy. You see, it's, it's just not logical. It's no logic to say the world is unreal. So our Vaishnava philosophy is that the world is real, but it is temporary, right? Just like the material body is real, but it is temporary. It's not going to last forever. So we have to understand everything in this world is a creation of the Supreme Lord. And it's meant for his pleasure. Just like you could say, well, you know, God didn't make this car. The motor company made it, right? Mercedes-Benz, they made their car. And Proton, they made their car. Right? The, the different factories, God didn't make them. But... Who gave all the elements, all the material to make the cars? All the different parts are made from material, they're made from metal. Where does the metal come from? Where does the plastic come from? Where does the, the different materials which are used 
to put a car together, where does it all come from? Actually, it's all coming from the Supreme. Because if you look, all of the different elements of the creation, they are all different combinations of the elements of material nature. Earth, water, fire, air, and ether. All of the elements, are co the ele combination of these things. There's some earth and some water, some fire, air, and ether. And they're combined in different proportions and they appear in the form in which they, they have. Just like we put up the house and we have microphones and we have uh, mobile cameras and motor cars. All of these things, they're all constructed with the basic elements taken from nature. Combinations of earth and water and fire, and air, and ether. So you have to understand that everything is actually the property of God. It's all His. Therefore, we're meant to use it for His service. And we're meant to take only what is necessary for ourselves, and don't take more, knowing well to whom it all belongs as stated in the Ishopanishad. The Ishopanishad is from the Yajur Veda and uh, is Shruti, it's a Vedic text. Sometimes people don't accept Bhagavad Gita and they don't accept even Bhagavatam because the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam are not the original Veda. They're not Shruti. The Shruti means the four Vedas. But anything else is, the, for example, Puranas, Mahabharat, Ramoyana, these things, they are smriti. They're not shruti, they are smriti. So there's, two divi there's this division, these two classes of scripture. The shruti refers to the hearing and the smriti is remembering. The smriti, shruti is hearing directly. And the smriti is hearing indirectly. Just like mother may say something, so direct order is there. Mother said, don't do this. But then another time, the sister comes and said, mother said you should do this. Mother said you should do it. It's coming from the sister, and she's saying what mother said. So Smriti is like that. Just like we have the Puranas, they're telling us about Krishna. It's about Krishna. But the Vedas are the original, that's, that's eternal knowledge, eternal knowledge. Tenhe Brahma Hridaye Adikavaye. The Vedic knowledge was imparted into the heart of Brahma at the time of creation. So the Vedic knowledge is eternal, it's not created by anybody. Vyasa Dev organized that they could be written down for the people in the Kali Yuga. Because Srila Vyasadeva knew that in the Kali Yuga people have poor memories and they need to have everything written for them. Previously, before the Kali Yuga, people could hear and they would remember everything. They would just hear one time. They could remember. We hear again and again, time after time, and we don't remember. <laughs> Kali Yuga, the Kali Yuga, you see we're influ So to help us in the Kali Yuga, Srila Vyasadeva had the Vedas written down. And originally there was one Veda, but Srila Vyasadeva divided it into four. 
and he gave one Veda to each of his four disciples. And in this way the Vedic knowledge was disseminated in the world. So four Vedas. And in, in the four Vedas there are Upanishads also. So I'm quoting the Upanishad, Isavashyamidams, everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should accept, therefore, only those things necessary for himself. And one should not accept more than that, knowing well to whom they belong. In other words, take your quota. Don't take more than what we need. Yeah, but in material world, people are all greedy. Everybody, everybody wants more. And everybody says, I don't have enough. I need more. I want to have more than the other person. <laughs> they don't want to be one. They don't want to be on the common platform. They want to be different from others. So this is the problem. So the same way, you've got the Gyanis. The Gyanis, they don't want to simply be a servant. They want to be God themselves. They were trying to enjoy the material world and they failed. Then they renounce the world and they take to the path of Gyan, the path of knowledge, cultivating knowledge. But that is also not perfect because it's not going to take you to Goloka. The path of knowledge, first of all, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, takes a long time. Bahunam Janmanamante Dhyanavamam Prabhupada. After many births and deaths, when one is actually in knowledge, then he surrenders to Krishna. Such a soul is very rare. So the path of Gyan, you make advancement very slowly, and often what happens is you go off track. Instead of coming to know Vasudev Sarvamiti, you simply think, Aham Brahmasmi, and you're satisfied with that. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And they stop there, they think, that's it, this is, and the, they think Brahman is the highest. They don't understand that within the Brahman, there is para Brahman, there's a supreme Brahman who is the personality of Godhead. And we have a relationship with him. So the whole par process of self-realization is to come to understand our relationship with the Supreme. That he is the master and we are the servant. Ekala Ishwara Krishna are sub -bhritya. There's only one Supreme, one master. And that, that is Krishna's devotees. And all others are his servants. So that is the purified consciousness. You want to come to that kind of liberation. So on, on that level there are four kinds of liberation which are acceptable. But Sayuja Mukti is never acceptable. Sayuja Mukti is becoming one or merging. So that is never accepted by the devotee because the devotee wants to hear about Krishna. He wants kirtan. He wants sadhu sangha. He wants association badly. That's very important for the devotee. But for the impersonalists, they just want oneness. Aham, aham what? They're thinking about it. <laughs> Wonderful. I asked him, what is this philosophy? He said, he said, well, I'm thinking about it. So that is their, you know, they think about where, what is their destination, where are they going to get to, what are they going to do. So they have to put aside all of the deviations, all of the other things. You have to put aside the, the uh, idea of becoming one, and you have to hear about becoming a servant. Instead of becoming one, become the servant. 
So some people they try to become God, but we simply want to be the servant. There's more pleasure in being the servant than in being the master. So Sukadeva Goswami is suggesting take to the path of knowledge and that will solve the problem. But Maharaj Parikshit will, you see, he, he will not accept this. When later on, when Sukadeva Goswami came back there, then he wouldn't, he wouldn't discuss even Bhakti Yoga with Sukadeva. So the whole philosophy, you can see there's a progression, karma and then jnana and then we'll finally come to bhakti. Because you go to karma, karma, karma acti karmic activities, they'll take you to heaven. And by the path of jnana, that will take you to the brahman. But if you do bhakti, then you can go to, into Goloka, into the spiritual world and be engaged in the service of Krishna. So that is the highest platform. That is the goal, what we want. All right, any questions? Yes? Maharaji has a question? No? The path of Gyan will take you only to Brahman. And if you go to Brahman, Arora Krishrena Patam Tatam Tada Patanti Addo Nadrita Yasmadangraya. You go to the Brahman, you can't stay there, you fall. Arora Krishrena Param Patam Tada. You fall back into the material world. So this is what happens if you just do your own thing and go to go to the even you 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 have a you're the in charge or whatever but we have to explain that the impersonal liberation is not the ultimate solution it's not going to save us so sukadeva goswami is still testing maharaj parikshit he's still testing him by, by just talking about Gyan, the path of Gyan. All right, are there any questions? So the, pa the platform of Gyan is not factual liberation, it's theoretical liberation. Because you go to the Brahman and then you fall back to the material world. But Krishna said, if you go to his abode, you never come back. You never live there. You never want to go back. Just like some people, they go to, they go to, some people go to Mayapur. They never want to come back. Right? They want to stay there forever. Some people go to America. They never want to come back. Like that. So you go to Goloka, you never want to come back to this world. Because this world is not the supreme place. This is Mrityuloka, the place of death. This, uh, this is a place where there's Dukalayam Ashasvatam, a temporary place of misery. There's no real happiness until we take up devotional service. If you want the real happiness, we have to take up bhakti yoga. So Sukadeva Goswami is going through the different things, making sure that Parikshit Maharaj is not going to be attracted to atonements or to the path of knowledge. He wants to bring him to bhakti, to devotion. Don't be attracted to these other paths. They may look nice, but <laughs> just like, you know, you see people do 
meditation, and they, they, you know, there's people who are doing these fire yagyas and chanting mantras and throwing ghee in the fire. And you know, this, there, there's some group who go around, they do all these yagyas and like, and people think, oh great, oh so spiritual. Do they get any benefit? Yeah. They, they, they don't get any benefit from these things. It's just a show. It's just, just putting on a show. There's no purification. So we have to understand what is the real path of spiritual practice. And that is based on hearing and chanting. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakti.